Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to talk about net ionic equations, which are also sometimes called total or complete ionic equations. So, um, so far we've talked about uh, uh, double replacement reactions and then the states of matter involved with them. And sometimes we notice that we have aqueous compounds that are combining to make a solid. We call this a precipitation reaction because we have a insoluble product, something that becomes solid and it's no longer aqueous, meaning that it can no longer be dissolved into the solution, into the, 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 the water that it's dissolved in, and it'll drop out. And we call that the precipitate, much like the word precipitation, like rain, because it means to fall. And we watch the, fall, the solid fall out of the solution. So if we were to look at this uh, example here, we have sodium chloride that is aqueous, we have silver nitrate that is aqueous, and when we have our double replacement reaction, we end up with sodium nitrate, which is still aqueous, and then silver chloride, which is solid, because this is an insoluble ionic compound. So this is going to drop out of the solution, which will first look like sort of a, a hazy, kind of milky looking substance in the liquid, but it will eventually settle to the bottom as a solid. That we can, uh, uh, or like a powder that we can we can remove through either filtration or uh, evaporating all of the water. So when we think about how compounds dissolve in water, it the ions actually split up and float around on their own. So like if we have sodium chloride aqueous, what that actually means is that the sodium plus ions and the chlorine minus ions, the chloride ions, actually split up and just kind of float around on their own in the solution. If we apply this idea to a precipitation reaction, um, we can split up all of our ions and see what is actually part of the observable reaction. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So let's consider the equation from before. Um, we have our sodium chloride, our silver nitrate, combining to make sodium nitrate and silver chloride. And we apply the idea of ions splitting up. So our sodium chloride becomes Na plus and Cl minus. Our silver nitrate becomes Ag plus. Uh, silver plus and nitrate NO3 minus and then on the product side of the reaction we have sodium nitrate splitting up into sodium plus and nitrate minus and then our silver chloride solid and you'll notice that this doesn't split up because it's not aqueous it's not soluble so it's not going to be dissolved in the solution so it's going to be remained as a solid with the two ions still stuck together so um this what we have here this is what we call a total or complete ionic equation because it's showing all of the ions that are in the solution. Um, and uh, it, it is a little bit redundant because if we think about it, chemistry is all about change. And in terms of uh, studying a chemical reaction, we don't really care about the things that aren't changing. They're just there. So if we look at this equation and try to identify the things that aren't changing, well, we could see that the, the sodium plus ion is unchanged from the reactants to the products. It has went through no change at all. And same with the nitrate ion. The nitrate is here, and then the nitrate ion is also here on the product side. Nothing happened to it. It didn't combine with anything. No new substances were formed involving either the nitrate or the sodium. So if we kind of take note of these as the, the ions in the solution that aren't doing anything, we can actually cancel them out if we want to focus on the actual reaction that's happening. So these uh, red ions here, I'm just going to delete them from the equation. And what we end up with is silver plus ions plus chloride ions making silver chloride. And even though those sodium and nitrate ions were there, they were, they were involved in the solution that this reaction was taking place in, they weren't part of the reaction itself. And um, those ions that weren't part of the reaction, we call those spectator ions. It's kind of like the spectators of a sports game. They're, they're watching the sports, but they are not part of it. Um, and what we end up here, once we delete those spectator ions from the equation, is something called a net ionic equation. And a net ionic equation always shows you the chemistry that is occurring, the actual change that is occurring. So even though we had a silver nitrate solution and a sodium chloride solution being mixed, the actual chemistry that took place was that silver ions and chloride ions combined to make uh, insoluble solid uh, silver chloride. Um, let's try a practice. So for this, we want to, write to, want to write a total ionic equation and a net ionic equation. So we have uh, iron 3 nitrate uh, aqueous and um, aqueous sodium hydroxide in a 1 to 3 ratio. And they're going to combine to make iron 3 hydroxide, which is insoluble, and uh, 3 sodium nitrates. 
So to start off, we're going to make our total ionic equation or our complete ionic equation by taking all of the aqueous things and splitting them up into their component parts. So what that's going to look like, we have iron 3 plus and 3 nitrates. Make sure that you note that when nitrate is on its own, it doesn't need the parentheses with the 3 on the outside. It's going to be 3 NO3 minus because these are three individual NO3s that have become detached from the iron. We only needed the parentheses to show what the ratio of iron to nitrate was in the compound itself. Um, and then our sodium and our hydroxide split up. There's three of each since there was three total sodium hydroxides in the equation and keeping the ratio of the reactants and products is still very important. So we have one Fe3+, plus, three nitrates, three sodium plus, uh, three hydroxides. And then we're going to have our iron three hydroxide here, which is solid. We don't split it up because it's insoluble. And then lastly, we have three Na plus and three NO3 minus from the sodium nitrate that was on the product side. So if we figure out what our spectator ions are, um, it's not going to be iron. So we see nitrate is uh, unchanged on either side. And we see sodium is unchanged on either side. One trend that you'll notice is that all of the ions that are always soluble according to our um, solubility chart, those are going to be the ones that are often spectator ions because nothing that they're going to form in solution is going to be insoluble. Um, so we delete those and we end up with the total, or not the total, the, the net ionic equation of iron 3 plus uh, combining with three hydroxides to make FeOH3 solid. And this is our, our final answer here. Let's practice another one. So uh, in this one, we have uh, calcium nitrate reacting with sodium sulfate to make calcium sulfate and sodium nitrate in two of them. And you'll notice that all four of these compounds are aqueous, and that's going to make something interesting happen. So let's, let's get our, uh, our total ionic equation and see what's going on here. So when we split everything up that is aqueous, we find out that we're actually splitting up everything since everything was soluble. So we have calcium 2 plus plus 2 nitrate. Uh, plus two sodiums plus one sulfate, making calcium two plus plus one sulfate plus two sodium ions plus two nitrates. And if we figure out what our spectator ions are, we'll see that it's all of them because calcium goes from here to here unchanged, nitrate goes from here to here unchanged, sodium goes from here to here unchanged, and sulfate goes from here to here unchanged. So in this case, since all of the spec all of the ions are spectator ions, we can cancel them all out and we'll find out that there is no net ionic equation. And this is often the case when you have, or not often, always the case when you have all aqueous components. Because if you think about it, nothing is actually happening in this equation. Everything is splitting up, everything is just floating around, nothing is combining to make a new substance, therefore no actual chemistry is occurring. So even though we are able to write a balanced chemical uh, equation for it, it's kind of an illusion. This isn't actually representing anything real happening. So uh, you're only ever going to get an actual ionic equation if you have some sort of precipitation formed. Or sometimes things form into a liquid, but we might talk about that at a later date. So that is all for today, um, and I hope this helps with your homework. See you in the next video.